You can help bring expressions of faith back in America. We'll explain what changed and the opportunities to go on offense. I'm Stuart Shepard, and this is First Liberty Live. Thank you for being part of this project. Thank you for liking and sharing these videos with your friends and family. If you find them interesting, they probably will too if they're like-minded. Uh, so thank you in advance from all of us for sharing those around and about. Matt Kraus is my good friend here who served for uh, a decade as a state representative here in the state of Texas, uh, now out of the state legislature. That's right. And he's currently uh, doing some work with us as an attorney here at First Liberty Institute. Hi, Matt. Hey, Stuart. Good to see you. I want to talk to you about this Restoring Faith in America project that we've got going on. First, explain to us what changed in the law and what that allows us to do now that we couldn't do before. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We, we wouldn't be having this conversation just uh, two years ago, three years ago. But thanks to First Liberty and the incredible work that, that y'all have done for so many years, the cracks started uh, appearing in the Lemon Test in 2019 in the Bladensburg Cross case, which was a First Liberty case, where they were trying to decide if this World War I memorial with this cross this huge cross at a cemetery could stay up uh believe it's actually in the middle of an intersection that's right that's yeah. right that's right that, yeah that's right i nearly get hit by a car every time i go <laughs> yeah that's right at least you know where you're going yeah but yeah that's right and so first liberty was there to say no you you shouldn't take that down there's it that, that has historical value it has importance to our country and, and what we were built upon uh a, a, an appeals court thought that that was not uh that the cross should not be there but the supreme court said no you have every right to have that cross there and in that opinion we first started seeing some of the cracks in what's known as the lemon law and that is uh from uh, the lemon test which is from lemon v kurtzman a 1971 supreme court case where the court developed this convoluted three-pronged test to say whether a uh, public display of religion was constitutional or not and it had been used thousands of times since 1971 to strike down public displays of religion finally in 2019 the court started thinking Maybe this isn't the best test that we should be using. Fast forward three years to the Kennedy case, uh, which again, First Liberty uh, represented Coach Kennedy. Uh, all he wanted to do was kneel at the 50 yard line to thank God after a football game to say thank you for putting me in this position to be able to help these uh, boys out, uh, to be able to coach them and lead them through life. The school district said you can't do that. Several courts, courts of appeal said you couldn't do that. But in 2022, the Supreme Court said, no, you absolutely have the constitutional right to do that. That was a massive win. First Liberty did a great job getting that. But within the opinion of that, uh, they went one step further and they said, you know what? And let's get rid of this lemon test altogether. It's not yeah. served a useful purpose. We, we, need, we need a new test. And so the lemon test was gone. And instead they put in a history and tradition test, which if there's a history and tradition of a certain display or a certain document or certain things in America's history, then it's probably going to withstand constitutional scrutiny. And so that's what allows us to have this program here today. Two things about that. One, many people probably think of this in terms of the idea of being offended and then you file suit. This right. kind of knocks that out as well, right? That's exactly right. And the Bladensburg Cross case went a long way into that as well. The offended observer status where you can have 9,999 people drive by and think, oh, I like that cross there. One person drives by and is offended by it and says that shouldn't Often be Often driving there. in from out of state. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> specifically right. Specifically to be offended. That, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that's exactly right. And and now the court said, no, we're, we're not going to do that. For decades, uh, we allowed those offenders, uh, those people who were highly offended at a, at, at a certain display, to take it down for the rest of us. No longer is that the case. Whenever we talk about this, it also shows up in the comments on social media. Well, you know. If yeah. you allow that, if you allow the cross, you're going to have to put up the uh, the satanic temple statue as well, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Why is that not true? Well, and, and first of all, what I love about First Liberty is that you don't just represent evangelical Christians, uh, whether it's the Jewish community, whether it's Sikhs, Hindus. If you've got a religious liberty claim, First Liberty wants to help you if it's a legitimate claim. Yeah. However, for restoring faith in America, uh, I've been working in Texas on a bill that would restore the Ten Commandments, put the Ten Commandments back up in public school classrooms. Right. And we heard that argument at committee hearing. Well, if you put the Ten Commandments you up, know. you're going to have to put up the Quran. You're going to have to put up this. No, because you go back to that new history and tradition test that's, that the Supreme Court has promulgated. The Quran, uh, other religions don't have the history and tradition of that foundational document that the Ten Commandments does. It's foundational to Western civilization and the better 
bedrock of our legal system in America. Yeah. So that's why there are certain documents, Ten Commandments and other things in these crosses that are going to survive that history and tradition test that other, uh, other symbols and other relics are not. Okay, let's talk about this from a practical standpoint. What can we do now that we could not do under the law two years ago? What's changed that we could, what, what can we bring back? What kind right. of things are we That's talking right. about? So uh, a great example is in Elkhart, Indiana. Uh, in 1980, uh, or, or in the 80s, the Supreme Court took down that Ten Commandments monument, a big granite Ten Commandments monument that they had outside their courthouse. Yeah. They said, you can no longer have that. Well, now you can. And so First Liberty is actually working with municipalities and cities and counties all across the country saying, hey, would you guys like to put back up a uh, Ten Commandments monument? You can actually do that where prayer has been taken out of maybe city council uh, uh, meetings, school board meetings, county you, commission, county commissions. You can actually put those back now. And so we're encouraging folks, hey, let's get prayer back into these places, whether it's those uh, Ten Commandments monuments, whether it's prayer, we, we can push, we, we can be aggressive and be on the offense for once and say, no, let's restore faith in America. Let's get that back out there. We recently won a case at, a, at the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals for Judge Wayne Mack. That's right. He wanted to open uh, sessions of court with a chaplain offering a prayer. He has a a volunteer chaplains program so he gives them time they can pray they can give a, a brief talk whatever they want to do he also allows people to leave the room if they want to that's right that's before court is called into session uh, but it was challenged and under this new understanding of the law he won that that's exactly right now uh as a legislator i signed on to an amicus brief that uh first liberty had done in that case to say no we think this ought to uh be allowed but we didn't have the court cases to back that up to be as strong as we do now and so is that case has evolved it's only gotten stronger and the judge matt case is a great uh is a great example of how you can be confident that you can restore these things and it survive uh constitutional scrutiny okay what about christmas displays yeah christmas displays for a long time it was kind of a okay yes you can have the nativity scene but you also have to have santa claus and you have to have this and you have to have that yeah we believe uh, first liberty believes under this new constitutional framework you can't just put a nativity scene out on uh out on your public uh, courthouse steps or in the public park or those things you don't have to kind of do this uh piecemeal approach and bring all these things and you can be bold you can be vocal on making sure that those nativity scenes point people back to the reason for the season and we think that that there's something that is very profound about that that can have a positive impact on your community and the culture by us reasserting these uh, the, and restoring faith in America. I've also seen here in our local area uh, very large menorahs that are set up to celebrate Hanukkah. That's right. That's right. And those would be allowed as well. The, there's more history and tradition for that than some of the other things. You don't necessarily have to pair those two if you don't want to. But I, I would think a, a menorah display probably also withstands uh, constitutional scrutiny as well. And this goes to a personal expression of, say, a school teacher or public employee, say somebody works at a library. What, what does that include? What can they do? Yeah, that, they, they can make sure that they only have a well I, in, in terms of what, uh, what what can they do in terms of the books that they have? on their shelves or what Bible they can on the desk? There. A absolutely. Okay, wear a yarmulke? Yeah, absolutely. Cross necklace? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you um, say a prayer before your meal? I mean, no one's ever really challenged that, but if you're in a crowded room full of school kids, somebody could challenge that. that that's exactly right. No, you, you're exactly right about that. And for a long time, and some people say, why is this project so important? There's some of this stuff that we could have done before but you may have been scared or you may have been intimidated or thought the law wasn't on your side. Part yeah. of restoring faith in America is reminding folks of the religious freedoms and liberties that we do have. As you said, the teacher with the Bible on her desk, the librarian, uh, if she wants to wear an expression of her faith, you can absolutely do that. And we have another case, the Groff case, that we think the Supreme Court is going to rule in our favor just within the next couple of weeks that will give more freedom and more liberties to employees all across this country to participate in activities like that. Okay, I, I, I'm going to ask a contrarian question. Some people would say, well, you're the attorneys. Why don't you go do all this? Yeah. Why is it we're asking people in their communities to start bringing these things back? Why have them do the work? That's right. And that's a great question because we really want this to be a grassroots effort, right? First Liberty, uh, we have finite resources. We have a finite amount of people, even though we get a lot of bang for our buck and are very uh, uh, effectual. We get one case to a Supreme Court in a term. L last session, we got two, which was unheard of. This yeah. time we have one. It's so God's favor. Th that's exactly right but you may have one two three maybe 10 12 cases a year that you can really have an impact on if you're if you're very blessed and god uh smiles favorably on you yeah. but we don't want 
12 instances of restoring faith in America, we would literally want hundreds, if not thousands. And so we can't be everywhere, but you can. And so wherever you are, wherever you're listening to this, whether you're in a blue state or red state, it doesn't matter where you are in the north and the south, east, west, you can have an active impact in restoring faith in America and where you're at. And so we want this to be a very much a grassroots movement um, because we don't care about we. We'll, we're there to help you if litigation does need to happen at some point. But in a lot of these places, you aren't going to need litigation. You're just going to need somebody who understands the law, who knows the law, is willing to go to your city council, go to your school board, go to your county commissioner and say, hey, we want to do this. Let's do this together. We'll give you the tools and help equip you to do that. But we want this to be an American movement, not something that just First Liberty does. I've sat in a room uh, of uh, hundreds of people when Kelly Shackelford talks about this. And when he talks about we finally have an opportunity to go on offense instead of constant playing defense, That's right. you hear a, an actual audible reaction in the room. This is a great opportunity to actually go do something affirmative in our culture. That's it. Uh, Roger Byron, one of our other attorneys here at First Liberty, and I were at a uh, conference a couple of months back, and they did different breakout sessions, and we did one on restoring faith in America, and the response we got was incredible for the reason you just said. They said, look, we love coming to talk about these philosophical issues. We love knowing kind of where the state of the law is. We hardly ever get a chance to have some marching orders or some tangible things we can go out and do to actually restore faith in America. So I think you're exactly right. It's a chance for us to play offense, for us to be uh, to be proactive in restoring those rights uh, that America has. And that is it's so uh, it, it just gives you such great enthusiasm and optimism for the uh, for the future of the country, because we never know when revival is going to start. We never know where revival is going to happen or how far it can spread. But I know Kelly Shackelford, I know everybody at First Liberty thinks this can be a part of restoring faith in America, but also bringing revival back to America to get us back to our uh, fundamental rights and liberties. And there's an aspect to this. I don't want to overstate it, but it kind of says, and I dare you to challenge me. Yeah, absolutely. We want that. If, if, if they want to challenge you, let us know, because uh, we, <laughs> we, we would love this. The way the courts have set themselves up, the way that these tests are coming to play, we have every right and every confidence that uh, doing these things that we're uh, asking folks to do in restoring faith in America are going to survive judicial scrutiny. Are you going to find a uh, liberal district judge or a liberal court of appeals that may strike these down? Maybe, but they're under precedent too. But if you get up to the Supreme Court, we are confident that these things are going to win out. Uh, and, and that's just great for us to continue to be able to beat that drum. And in the legal sense, there's an opportunity to broaden these freedoms out even more back to where they were when the founders wrote them into the Constitution. That's right. I, I'm I'm a little afraid people are are going to stop taking these to the courts because we keep getting such good precedent that if they know, OK, if we sue them here, they're going to beat us. Uh, yeah. And if they beat us, we're going to have this precedent. But yet, yeah, you're exactly right. We think the more ground we can take, the more ground we can cover, the better it will be for everybody and of all faiths and religions as well. I think people can pick up on your enthusiasm about this. Matt, why is your heart in this? Yeah. You, you, you're a talented person. You could yeah. be doing a lot of different things. Why this? Well, so I, I'm the, I tell folks I'm the son of a pastor. I'm the grandson of two pastors. I'm the brother of a pastor. I'm the cousin of a couple of pastors and the nephew of a pastor. You had no choice. Uh, I had no choice. That's <laughs> right. So religious liberty, religious faith has always been very important to me. But my dad always told me, he's like, hey, everybody's got a pulpit. It just may not be in a church. And so I've always tried to find the way that the Lord might uh, be able to use my gifts and talents to uh, impact the culture uh, and advance the kingdom. And so I think restoring faith in America has a unique ability to do that than anything I've seen in the last several decades. Uh, churches are going to continue to do what they do. Certain nonprofits are going to continue to do what they do. First Liberty is going to continue to stand in the gap and protect people's religious liberties. But in the last 30, 40, 50 years, I've not seen an opportunity that America has at a grassroots level for everybody to be able to participate and restore faith in America. And so that gets me so excited. The opportunities are are really endless for this, uh, the the, uh, the ability to get things done and to be able to actually to restore that faith. And so that, that's what gets me excited. I feel like we're getting to use our uh, talents and abilities here at First Liberty to get a message out to everybody. Again, it's not a First Liberty project. It's an American project that can restore faith in America and I think restores to, to what we all think America should be. Matt Krause, thank you so much for making time for us. Lots of good stuff in there. And we hope that we've moved some people to do something. Absolutely. Please do. Please go out and, and, and get excited and activated about this. And you you can uh, learn more about this at RFIA.org, Restoring Faith in America, RFIA.org. You can see how you can be a part of this process. Yeah, and I want to drive that home. The website, if you want to read up on this and, and get a little more detail and into the nuts and bolts of it, it's it's the acronym for Restoring Faith in America, RFIA.org. 
And if you drop by there, we've got examples and stories, and it explains again what you just heard Matt explain. So it's a good resource for you as you get involved in this. We want you to be actively engaged in restoring faith in America. You can have a part in this in an important role. We, and, and let us know your stories, by the way. As Absolutely. you do things, let us know, because we'd like to share that so others can be inspired by your efforts. First Liberty is fighting for what matters most.